噔噔噔，嘘嘘，噔噔噔，嘘嘘，噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔噔。By the feed the bears. What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Sound Attack once again, and I have another video for you today. Not mining. It's going to be along the tech realm, and we're going to be taking a look at the Azrock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard. Stick around. Alrighty, so starting things off, let's get into the specifications and then we'll get into my thoughts and opinions on the motherboard. But it does support a third gen AMD AM4 Ryzen. Well, there should be a caveat there. It won't support, of course, the APUs or the third gen APUs. So keep that in mind. And it does say it will have support for future AMD Ryzen processors, whatever those may be. So you have a little bit of upgradability there and you don't have to worry about buying this motherboard, throwing your current 3600 into it, and then buying a better processor when they launch for the 4000 series. At least that's the idea. And we had the same idea previously um, uh, as far as backwards compatibility. Um, we were supposed to have backwards compatibility and not all processors are backwards compatible and you guys have probably heard all about that already. Anyways, now that we know about the CPU support, let's talk about the rest of the specs. We have an 8 power phase design, DigiPower, 90 amp, Dr. Moss. Alright, so, you know. Pretty good power phase design for a mini ITX motherboard. It supports DDR4 up to 5400 megahertz plus with an overclock. Uh, it's standard, you know, I would be looking at running 3600, 3200 to 3600 megahertz memory. B die is gonna be great. In this particular system, we have Samsung B die and it's gonna be the G skill Trident Z Neo. It's the 18 CAS latency. We'll talk about tightening up the timings and the compatibility with the motherboard on that here in just a second. As a single PCIe 4.0 by 16 slot and graphics output options are HDMI and DisplayPort. 7.1 channel HD audio, Realtek ALC 1220 audio codec, and the Heimic audio. If I said that wrong, let me know in the comment section below. Four SATA 3, one Hyper M.2, so that is Gen 4, so that Sabrent rocket's gonna be fast as boy, and a, uh, you know, and uh, it does support SATA 3. Don't put a SATA 3 drive in there, come on. All right, so we got three USB 3.2 Gen 2. Uh, rear type has an A and a C, and the front type has a C support. And that's just gonna be the USB C header, USB 3.2 Gen 2 C header on the motherboard. You also have a six USB 3.2 Gen 1, two in the front, four in the rear. And as far as connectivity to your networks, it does come with Intel 2.5 gig LAN, which is awesome. And it does come with Wi-Fi 6, which is even more awesome because a lot of X570 boards like we've talked about in the past didn't have support for that. And Bluetooth 5.1 with a huge caveat on the Bluetooth that we're gonna talk about here in a second. Now we paired this obviously with the memory that we just mentioned as well as with a Ryzen 5 3600 and a, uh, 5700 XT, it was the anniversary edition, all water cooled, all in an Inwin A1 uh, case. It looks awesome. And uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with the motherboard overall as far as assembly goes. It came with everything in the box that you could expect. It comes with extra SATA cables, comes with the Wi-Fi antenna. The Wi-Fi antenna, the little tab on it broke off and uh, that was very annoying, so it doesn't sit up in the stand. I kind of wish it was like the traditional uh, Wi-Fi antenna. However, I do know that technically uh, it doesn't have the range and everything of, of whatever ASRock and ASUS have been doing with their little stand-up ones, but I just buy the ones off of uh, you know, Amazon. I'll link them down below that are just uh, antennas, traditional antennas that screw into the back and are on the motherboard and are out of the way. Um, I primarily use Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi module for the Bluetooth for the Xbox controllers, Xbox One controllers. I don't primarily use it for the Wi-Fi connectivity. However, with Wi-Fi 6, that's quickly changing, especially with small form factor, reduction of wires, 
so on and so forth. You do have to have a Wi-Fi 6 compatible router, so keep that in mind if you're looking at utilizing the Wi-Fi portion. All right, so the rest of the motherboard is as follows. You do have uh, very few fan, fan connectors, so plan on fan splitters accordingly. I believe it was two. Two fan headers? Yeah, two fan headers. It's not very many, so you know, get a splitter if you're gonna need that. You're only gonna have, you know, on a mini ITX, you're gonna, only gonna have a single slot card there. You do have USB 2.0 headers in case you need to use that with any sort of uh, Corsair plugins and so on and so forth. The Corsair pumps use those a lot, along with some RGB software, maybe with NZXT Hue and so on and so forth. Um, getting the motherboard all set up, like I said, was pretty easy. Where we started to run into issues was after the build, I tried to connect my Xbox One controller to uh, Windows 10 to play some games, Sekiro, so on. There's a few games where I use uh, controllers for, Rocket League, for example. It's very important to me, and it's the primary reason I buy motherboards with Wi-Fi modules in them, is to connect my Xbox One controller. And in this case, it wouldn't connect. So I went into the device manager. Wi-Fi works, Bluetooth's not there. No Bluetooth device and device manager. It's nowhere, nowhere to be found. So I'm like, well, shoot, the whole thing's already put together. I always put everything on a test bench first, make sure it boots and goes and posts into uh, the BIOS. Uh, but you can't really test Bluetooth module in the BIOS. And so now I think with that whole kind of before I put it into a water loop, I'm gonna start doing a Windows 10 to go build on a USB stick and using that to make sure this works because now I'm stuck with a motherboard that doesn't support that. I have to use a different adapter to get my Xbox One controller working and so on. So I filed uh, for an RMA and uh, the RMA was declined and they told me first I need to remove the Wi-Fi module and uh, reseed it. I mean, that's great and all, I suppose, if that's the fix, which apparently on reviews and everything everywhere, this is a common problem on this motherboard where you need to reseat the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. And I would just say to, uh, you know, run a Windows 10 to go drive if you're going to buy this motherboard and make sure the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth module are working. If they're not working, then go ahead and reseed it uh, per their instructions, which, you know, here's some pictures of them telling me how to do it. They did send a picture guide, so thanks for that, ASRock support. I don't want to pull my motherboard out of a custom loop in a mini ITX rig to fix my Bluetooth right now. I just it, I have some more plans for it. We're putting a more high-powered pump in there here coming up shortly. I'll do it then and hopefully it'll fix it and I'll let you guys know in the comment section below if that does fix it. Um, however, it's just, you know, the biggest downside of the motherboard is that for me. The positives though is uh, the DOC profiles worked right off of the bat. So we were good at 3600 megahertz, 18 CAS latency and we used the DRAM calculator to go ahead and tighten up the timings and we were able to get down 16 CAS latency uh, stable at 3600 megahertz on the Samsung B die of course and the motherboard runs it like a champ so memory support memory overclocking support seems to be fantastic I didn't have really any issues there and I would highly recommend picking it up we did get full speeds on the PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive, the Savorite Rocket with 5,000 megabytes per second read and write, and that came through like a champ as well. And then as far as the uh, GPU, it ran and was detected as PCIe 4.0 right off of the bat, and it spun up perfectly good and fine and actually is beating my RTX 2080 in benchmark specifically Firestrike so at 1080p and I'm super duper happy with all of that. Um, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on this motherboard. It's feature rich, it has everything you could want if it comes out of the box working. 
Uh, and that's the, you know, that's that's the gotcha here. You know, if you are, you know, looking at another motherboard that has that same option, that maybe check reviews and and see if it also has the same issue. But it probably doesn't. This seems to be the only one I found that does, and it's available and you can pick it up. Maybe you do go that route. The ASRock BIOS has gotten super, super clean. It's really easy to use. The only downside compared to like somebody like ASUS is you can't do the internet flash from the BIOS. You have to actually still load it onto a USB drive, load it into the BIOS, and then go ahead and update your uh, BIOS and your firmware for that that way. So it's kind of uh, archaic now that we have the internet BIOS option uh, internet BIOS update option from other suppliers. Um, so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I will see you next Tuesday.